Where does motivation come from? Why is it that sometimes we can feel super motivated, super pepped up and energetic, ready to tackle our day, and other times we feel blah, we feel mopey, we feel like we can't even motivate ourselves to get out of bed. In this video, I'm going to be discussing my top 10 tips for getting motivated and staying motivated. And this is actually the first of a new series that I'm doing. You could call this a survey video, okay? So it's half survey and half video. So throughout the video, I'm gonna be asking questions and then based on your comments, I will write the next script. So the next video in the series is actually gonna be based on the comments that you leave on this video. So the first question, uh, because it's actually New Year's Eve today, and this video is gonna be going out on New Year's Day, so the question is, what is your New Year's resolution? And if you're watching this video after New Year's Day, then you can let me know what your New Year's resolution was and if you kept it. And in a future video, I'm actually gonna count down the top 10 New Year's resolutions that you leave in the comments. Number one, remember on the old cassette tapes how we used to actually use our finger or you could use a pencil or your pinky to rewind or fast forward the cassette tape. Well, now we're gonna do that exact thing, but we're gonna take our cassette tape and we're actually gonna fast forward. So you could call this the mental fast forward, where we fast forward ourselves into the future, we've already completed this task, we've already gotten this over with, and we're going to visualize the real tangible benefits that will come once we actually do complete the task. So this tip is about really thinking very clearly about all of the different benefits that are gonna come from you getting this task done. So maybe it's exercising, maybe it's cooking a healthy meal or going to the farmer's market or something like that. But you're really gonna sit down, write it down if that helps you. Every single one of the tangible benefits that will come once you complete this task. Are you a glass half full person or a glass half empty kind of a person? So this question is, are you usually more focused on the positive things or are you usually more focused on the negative things? Now, human nature unfortunately means that oftentimes we focus on the negative. We focus on the not so pleasant parts of either things we've done or repercussions of things we're gonna do. Um, and that's exactly what this tip is. So the other half of the mental fast forward is to not only imagine those tangible benefits, but imagine those tangible repercussions and consequences of you not getting that thing done. And I'll just be perfectly honest with you, there are a lot of times where the only thing that actually motivates me to do this particular task is the negative repercussions that will result if I don't. And again, you can write these down. Sometimes it's really helpful to see the list of repercussions written down and you can really start to have a tangible grasp on what those repercussions are gonna be. So in the first tip, we talked about the tangible benefits and in this one, we're talking about the tangible consequences or repercussions. I'll come right out and admit it. I am a procrastinator and I have pulled my fair share of all nighters staying up all night at the very last minute to get something done just in the nick of time, to get something done just before the deadline or just before the due date. And I'm curious to know if you're the same way. So do you procrastinate on projects? Or are you somebody who gets something done the minute it's assigned, um, months or weeks before it's actually due? Um, and the main reason I ask is because I wonder if people like that even exist. So this tip is to embrace yourself for who you are 
And just to let you know, for myself personally, I have had to, you know, really recognize that beating myself up for procrastinating doesn't help. And the bottom line is that even if we really, really procrastinate on something and put it off to the very last minute, hey, at least we did it, right? So instead of beating myself up for procrastinating, I congratulate myself for actually getting that thing done. Because certainly, even if I've waited to the last minute, it's still better than having just not done that thing at all. So this is a really great tip. You can apply this into weight loss. You can apply this into just your daily life because this tip is to go easy on yourself and don't give yourself grief for procrastinating or for waiting to the last minute or for any number of things, especially with my health coaching clients. I see this a lot where they'll eat a cookie or eat this or eat something bad and then for like two weeks they're just berating themselves and making themselves feel bad for eating that food or for splurging on that food and this tip is to let go of the past don't dwell on what you did don't give yourself grief don't give yourself a hard time and instead focus on the future focus on what you're gonna do and focus on the things you accomplished and congratulating yourself for those accomplishments. So let's talk about motivating ourselves to do things that we really, 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 really don't want to do because that happens in life, right? There are some tasks uh, which are kind of enjoyable or kind of fun and then some tasks that are very unpleasant. So my question for you is what are the most dreaded tasks or most dreaded things that you really hate to do? What do you think is the most unpleasant? Or go ahead and leave a list of several unpleasant things. These are the tasks that you find it most difficult to motivate yourself to do. So for me, that's things like doing my taxes. And my tip here is to kind of think about um, if you've ever been in a room that's filled with a really unpleasant odor, right? And it's really uncomfortable just to be in the room because it totally freaking stinks, right? So you kind of hold your nose and jet out of the room as quick as you possibly can. And just to be perfectly honest with you, that's kind of how I visualize myself doing some of these tasks and getting some of these tasks done is I actually just kind of need to hold my nose and get out as quickly as possible, get it done as quickly as possible. So part of this task is to realize that that temporary discomfort that's going to come when you're doing this task or getting this thing done um, is just that. It's temporary. It's passing. It's not going to be that doing your taxes is going to ruin your life for the rest of your life. It's going to be a little bit of temporary discomfort. And then on the other side, you have those tangible benefits that we're talking about in tip number one. And the other thing about this is that as we continue to do these unpleasant tasks, the dreaded tasks that we really don't want to do, is that the more that we do them, the more we start to realize that that wasn't that bad. It really wasn't that bad. Um, and so that in and of itself is kind of a source of motivation, at least for me. After my first several times getting my taxes done, I've just kind of realized that, eh, you know, it's really not that bad. It takes a little bit of time and then you're done and then it's over. So part of this tip is again, focusing on those tangible benefits and realizing that that temporary discomfort is temporary and it's gonna go away. And if we can just kind of hold our nose through this stinky room and plow our way through, that when we get to the other side, it ends up being completely worth it. Do you think that the law of attraction works? I've actually gotten a lot of comments from people asking me what do I think of the law, law of attraction? Does it work? Is it totally a hoax or whatever? Um, so I want to know what you think. Do you think the law of attraction works? And you can let me know what 
experiences in your life um, you've had that either make you feel like the law of attraction works or the law of attraction doesn't work. And what I will tell you in this tip is how I kind of feel about the law of attraction. So I think that there is a lot of benefit in visualizing what we want and thinking very tangibly about what we want and visualizing ourselves doing that thing and really thinking about what is it going to be like when I do this thing. So let's talk real examples like doing taxes, writing a paper. Am I going to do it at my house? Am I going to do it on the couch? Am I going to go to a coffee shop to do it? Is this something that I'm going to find a friend and maybe go somewhere with them and get it done or go to their house and get it done and then visualize myself really sitting there. Okay, well, I'm going to need to have my computer. I'm going to need to have this and I need to have a calculator, but really thinking and visualizing through exactly what it's going to look like when you're doing this task and when you're getting this task done. And as far as the law of attraction goes, the idea is that as we start visualizing it and thinking about it, we start kind of drawing it to us. We kind of manifest all of these things happening just by thinking about them. And so this tip is to visualize yourself doing the task. So in the first tip, we kind of visualized ourselves already having the task done so we could think about the benefits. But now in this tip, we're going to actually visualize ourselves doing the task and thinking exactly what it's going to look like when we're doing it and getting it done. So then the second part of the law of attraction, and this is just based on, you know, as long as I've been alive, what I've been able to kind of observe about my life and what works and what doesn't work is that just sitting there and visualizing yourself doing something or visualizing something happening um, doesn't really do a whole lot in and of itself. And again, you can kind of leave your comments and let me know if you disagree with that and you think that the law of attraction by itself does work. So if the law of attraction by itself doesn't work, then this tip is to commit to yourself to do that thing to actually do the task, whatever it is. So again, we talked about writing papers, we talked about doing our taxes, we talked about cooking a healthy meal or exercising or whatever thing it is that we're having a hard time motivating ourselves to do. And so part of this you know, tip that I would maybe call doing it. So we have the law of attraction, which is visualizing. And then this tip, which is actually doing the thing. This is about making a commitment to yourself. This is about making the decision to do the task, to get it done. And I actually kind of have a little motivation dance. So I have a task I need to try and motivate myself to do like cooking a meal. So I've been working all day, I get home, I'm kind of stressed out. How am I going to motivate myself to now go in the kitchen and cook a meal for myself instead of just going out and getting something fast or something like that? My motivation dance, normally I would do this standing, but I'll show you the seated version, is to take the Superman pose. And I can even kind of maybe come up on my knees a little bit. Raw. So the motivation dance, it starts by just standing in Superman pose. And there's actually scientific evidence now that shows that just standing in Superman pose before you give a presentation or give a talk or anything like that, just standing in this pose, standing in the Superman pose, boosts your confidence and energizes you and motivates you. So this is where it starts with the Superman pose. And then I kind of think about, you know how when a football player makes a touchdown, they have this little dance that they do. And that's my favorite part of watching football, if I do watch football, is the little dance, right? So maybe they do a little this number, they kind of dance around a little bit, they're kind of like going at it, they're like really happy. So it's kind of like that, but I do my touchdown dance both before and after I get my task done. 
So a little bit of dancing around, a little bit of just getting myself pumped up and jived up and moving around, being goofy, having fun, doing a little touchdown dance. Gets me all pumped up and motivated, so I'm gonna go do this thing. I'm gonna go get it done. I'm gonna go cook dinner. I'm gonna go do this. Or I'm gonna go do my taxes. I'm gonna get them done. And whether it's because it makes me smile, it makes me laugh, or whether it's because the Superman pose really does help, I don't really know. But having this dance is part of making my commitment to myself, making my decision that I'm gonna do this thing or do that thing. And I think that one of the reasons why there are so many different weight loss products out there that do so well is because when people click on the button to buy this product, it's them making a commitment to themselves. It's them making a decision that I'm gonna do this, I'm gonna lose this weight, I'm gonna go on this diet, I'm gonna use this whatever it is, thingamajig to help me lose weight. Um, and it's often not the thingamajig or the doohickey or the meal replacement or whatever, it's you. It's you who helped you lose weight. It's you who motivated yourself to do all these things that you needed to do. And the only thing that buying that product did was it forced you to make a commitment to yourself. So again, you can write this down, you can write down your decision, um, but I love doing a little dance. It's my little commitment dance, you could call it. It's me going, I'm gonna do this thing, I'm gonna get this done, I'm gonna get up early and go to the farmer's market. And as you make that commitment to yourself, that is a huge factor in gaining the motivation and cultivating the motivation that it takes to actually get it done. So there's a concept in physics called inertia and momentum. And basically, long story short, inertia is the amount of energy it takes to get a non-moving object into motion. Um, and actually it takes a lot more effort or a lot more force to start moving a non-moving object than it does to keep a moving object moving, right? So this is the idea of momentum and keeping track of our accomplishments so that we can ride on the wave of motivation and momentum that comes from our accomplishments. So this kind of comes back to some of the previous tips where I'm talking about focusing on the things that you do do. Focus on the good things that you do. Focus on your accomplishments. And then as you keep your mind focused on those good things and being your own cheerleader, instead of constantly deprecating yourself, being hard on yourself, giving yourself a really hard time about all the things that you didn't do or whatever, you're actually gonna be your own cheerleader and you're gonna keep your mind on the things that you have gotten done and the things that you should be proud of and give yourself credit where credit is due. So we have this tendency to kind of sell ourselves short and be really hard on ourselves and give ourselves a lot of grief and all that does is make us feel worse about ourselves. Um, but it's really human nature to do that. So it's something that we need a tip for because we need to make a proactive decision, a conscientious decision to switch our thinking and focus on the good things, focus on our accomplishments. And then realize that as we start thinking about our accomplishments, well, I ate healthy this morning, I had a big salad yesterday, I've got a lot of veggies in the fridge from the farmer's market. Those things will propel you forward. So you kind of ride the wave of the good things you're already doing and let those things push you forward. And again, as we take our mind off of the negative things that hold us back and that stop us, it makes it even easier for us to continue moving forward. Do you ever write to-do lists? Do you ever write a little list that says the word to-do on the top, or two words, to-do, um, and then make a list of all the things that you need to get done? I do that. I am the, maybe not the queen of to-do lists, but I have definitely written my fair share of to-do lists. 
Um, so my question is, do you write to-do lists or do you put reminders in your phone? Do you leave yourself little post-it notes around the house? Uh, the question is, what do you do to help you remember the things that you need to get done? Or do you write them down at all? And what this tip is about is how do we get the things that we've written our, our to-do list um, actually done? How do we actually do the things on our to-do list? And this has been something that I have struggled with a lot. I have written a lot of to-do lists that get stuffed in my purse. I never even look at them again. Or I look at them all the time and think, wow, I can't believe I haven't gotten any of this stuff done. Um, so one thing that's really me is to um, divide my list into parts. And I actually kind of found this tip on another website years ago. Um, but basically, you divide your to-do list into things that you really need to do, like today, the like super pertinent, super important stuff. Um, and then another section, which is like, okay, a little less important. And then the bottom half of the page is your big things that you need to do, your big projects, um, big things that you wanna be thinking about, you wanna get them done, but maybe they're not as, um, you know, they don't need to be done as quickly, or maybe it's just a longer project that's gonna take maybe even its own to-do list to really break down all the pieces of that project. But what this did is it kind of shortened the amount of the to-do list um, that I'm feeling really focused on and that I'm feeling really overwhelmed by. So there's a lot of benefit to writing down the stuff that we need to do. Um, but one of the things that I found was that it kind of intimidated me more because then I had this relentlessly long to-do list that wasn't really even doable, wasn't really even possible for me to do all those things. So you can experiment, splitting your to-do list into just two sections, super important, less important, um, or split it into four sections, or if you want to, split it into even more sections. And I really want you guys to let me know if this works for you. And also, if you are already writing to-do lists, if you have a problem getting your to-do lists done, and this tip is just to give yourself more manageable things to do. Give yourself a more manageable to-do list and it'll make it a lot easier to start checking those things off. So let's go back to discussing those tasks that we really, really, really don't want to do. So have you ever had that feeling where you wake up in the morning, ugh, you stretch, and you just don't even wanna get out of bed. You're having a really hard time motivating yourself to do anything. Maybe you know that you have to go to work, you have something really dreadful you have to do today that you really don't wanna do. You just cannot motivate yourself to do anything. You can't even motiv motivate yourself to get up. So, when I'm feeling overwhelmed with a lot of things that I really don't wanna do, and I'm having a hard time motivating myself to do those things I don't wanna do, um, instead of trying to force myself to do one of those things, um, instead, I do something that I do want to do. So maybe it's playing music, or working on a song, or watching a movie, or documentary, or just going and playing with my dog or going and running, going running or something. So the point of this tip is that when we're feeling really super overwhelmed by this really long list of things that we really, really don't wanna do, um, the best way to, you know, kind of start moving in the right direction is to do something that we do want to do. And this kind of comes back to the previous tip about building our wins and marking things off our to-do list. And the more that we get other things done, it propels us forward. It makes it easier to even move forward and propel us on to do the next thing. So you could call this tip, build your wins if you want to. Because the idea is that if we're feeling super unmotivated, like we can't even get out of bed, but then we can motivate ourselves enough to get out of bed, shower, brush our teeth, do whatever by 
knowing that, you know what, I'm gonna do something I do wanna do, I'm gonna do something fun that I enjoy, um, then that right there is a really, really big win. And that will propel you forward, um, making it even easier to start tackling those other things in the day that maybe you're not so excited about having to do. My last tip is to surround yourself with people who are motivated and realize that that will motivate you. So have you ever noticed or observed of yourself that when you hang around certain people, after a while you start to kind of act like them or you start to kind of talk like them and sometimes we'll say, oh yeah, they've really rubbed off on me or he's really rubbing off on her, right? It's because as we spend time with people, we start to take on certain aspects of their personality. Um, and this can be a really, really good thing, but it can also be a bad thing. So part of this tip is to separate yourself from people who are really unmotivated because they will drag you down and they will make it harder for you to motivate yourself either because they kind of resent you because you're motivated or maybe they're just such negative Nellies that it's really hard to be around them without kind of getting negative or getting bummed out. Um, so part of the tip is to, you know, kind of make the realization, you know, if there's people that you're hanging out with that are really unmotivated, then that could be part of the reason that you don't feel motivated. And then the other part of this tip is to start surrounding yourself with people who are motivated and who are positive. And this is one of the main reasons that I really like being a part of the Psyche Truth channel. Because here we have a whole group of people who are motivated, they're positive, they care about their health, they have a lot of compassion, not only for other people, um, but for themselves. So they wanna take care of their health, they wanna take care of their body, they wanna do things to help other people, and that just in and of itself is really, really motivating to me. And it's true that, you know, the people that we hang around or the people that we spend our time with, they do kind of rub off on us. They do kind of affect us in the way that we feel about ourselves. So this tip is to recognize that if you're feeling really super duper unmotivated, spend a little time with somebody who is really motivated. So maybe you wanna favorite this video and come back and spend a little bit of time with me, if I motivate you, of course. Um, or you can start a group of people online if you wanna do that. You can start finding people in your real life, your real friends, and even kind of maybe throw it out there to them. Hey, you know, do y'all wanna, you know, have a motivation group or something like that? just really recognizing that, hey, here's a place for us to get together and all motivate each other and help to motivate ourselves. And just recognize that being around really unmotivated people can have an unmotivating effect on you. In a future video, I'm going to be discussing motivation for health. How do we motivate ourselves to exercise more, to eat right, to eat better? And based on your comments and your questions that you leave in the comments, will actually kind of shape how that script takes shape. And in another video, I'm going to count down the top 10 New Year's resolutions that you guys leave in the comments. So if you want your New Year's resolution to be read in the next video, make sure to leave it down below. Thank you so much for watching this video. I really hope that you found it motivating. If you'd like to learn more about me and my health coaching practice, you can visit KarinaRachel.com. I do hope that you will thumbs up this video. Be sure to leave your comments down below and I look forward to seeing you again next time. Thank you so much for watching. So you've decided that you're ready to improve your health and lifestyle once and for all. But maybe you're wondering where to start. Check out my video, 10 easy tips on how to get started improving your health and lifestyle. If you're looking to clean out your pantry and get rid of the absolute worst unhealthy foods that no one should be eating, 
check out my video, What Not to Eat. And once you're feeling a little bummed out about all the foods you just had to get rid of, you'll probably be wondering what you can eat. So check out my video, Basic Nutrition, What to Eat. If we're feeling really badly about ourselves, motivation can be even more difficult. For some simple tips on how to improve our self-esteem and feel better about ourselves, check out my video, Self-Esteem.